MIDI in Pro Tools is hard. I'm very glad I did this video because this is a good lesson in if I can figure out how to make this work, anyone can make this work. So today we're looking at the Chase Bliss Audio blooper and MIDI control in the DAW Pro Tools, the notoriously worst MIDI DAW ever. MIDI. It's a mother f I can relate. You can relate. That's why we're here, right? On that note, I wanted to say how pleased I am that so many of you are finding these videos to be so helpful to you. Uh, that actually means the world to me. So we're just going to keep doing this until there's nothing left. That could be forever, right? Okay, let's do this forever. MIDI unscripted forever. This is MIDI unscripted using blooper with a DAW part three. In part one, we talked about logic, which is what I use in my studio. Uh, part two, we talked about Ableton with edge of breakup. And in this part, we're gonna talk about the mighty Pro Tools. We have a treat for you this time. Well, I really like to think that we have a treat every time. But I'm featuring two different videos from two very different backgrounds. And blooper with Pro Tools being used in two different ways. Um, one is with a method I've shown previously with the Roland UM1. And the other is using QConnect as the MIDI interface. For the record, I never ask for a super nice, polished, professional looking video. Just a regular old cell phone video will do just fine for me. Sometimes that's what I get, but sometimes I get a little more. doesn't matter though. All contributions are equally important to us as the learner. The first video we have up is Mark Johnston showing us how to use Pro Tools with Blooper in a pretty familiar way if you saw my Logic tutorial. Uh, it's Computer, Roland UM1, MIDI Box, TRS Cable, Blooper. Before we jump into our screen record of our DAW and the actual recording process, let's run through some of the gear we're using really quick and how we're setting things up. Uh, I'm going to be playing the Jennings Voyager guitar uh, and recording basically just into a DI with uh, a quick and dirty guitar amp sim in console, which is Universal Audio's recording interface pre-recorder app. So let's jump into it. Okay, so let's get into how we're going to set things up right now. Uh, we are using three very crucial pieces of gear to set this up. Uh, if you have not watched Paul's other videos on how to set up Blooper with MIDI and a DAW, I recommend that you watch the other episodes of MIDI Unscripted. Paul is much more cogent and uh, also much more thorough than I'm going to be in this situation. But let's run down just kind of the crucial pieces that you're going to need. Thing one your blooper or chase bliss pedal, but for all intents and purposes and for this process, blooper. Uh, thing number two is you want the uh, chase bliss or other uh, MIDI box, which converts five pin MIDI to either TS or TRS, depending on the brand of pedal that you're sending to. Uh, chase bliss uses TRS, and so we have uh, two of the ports on this one configured for TRS using the internal jumpers, so make sure that you are checking that if you're getting any issues. Thing number three is the Roland UM1. It is a USB to MIDI 5 pin interface that will send MIDI from your DAW over to your 
uh, your your MIDI box, your your pedals that take five pin, whatever it is that you want. It will also return MIDI, uh, which can be helpful for certain applications that we are not going to get into today. So if you have the UM1, make sure that you go on Roland's website and install the drivers. Um, that left LED should be lit up um, once it's plugged in, letting you know that it's working. When you're running your MIDI clock, as you will see later in this video, the uh, rightmost LED will light up as well, letting, it, letting you know that it is actually receiving and passing MIDI information. If you're not seeing that other light light up when you're recording, you know something is wrong. So, very simple, very straightforward. We are using a TRS cable to connect blooper to the Chase Bliss MIDI box and a and then we are just running straight into our computer. Before we jump in today, I will tell you that we are using the Universal Audio Apollo Twin uh, to record, and there are some pluses and minuses to that for the purposes of this video. The pluses being, generally speaking, the Apollo stuff sounds incredible. The minuses being that it uses its own software called Console in order to record and monitor and also route a lot of my computer's audio in general. So when we're screen recording later in this, you will notice some chorusing here and there, some some phase issues uh, as a byproduct of the screen recording program I'm using, which is just QuickTime. So apologies for that. But in general, massive recommendation. The Apollo is very good. It sounds great. Okay, so we're here in Pro Tools and we have our, our session set up. We've got 65 BPM and a similarly BPM, actually exactly BPM, uh, little stereo drum patterns. We've got something cool to play along to. Which, fantastic. So, we are going to uh, configure Pro Tools really quick to send MIDI clock to the uh, blooper via the Roland UM1. So let's go to setup, MIDI, MIDI beat clock. Select the UM1, hit OK. Let's create a MIDI track. So you'll go to create new track, go down to MIDI, hit create, go over to your mixer window, make sure that the output of the MIDI track is out to the UM1, and then we'll create another new track, audio track for the blooper, we can name it bloop. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is record and enable the MIDI track, but not the blooper track. And we're also gonna really quick pull up my guitar track in my ears. So that'll, my, that'll create some chorusing for you guys. So apologies in advance for that. You hear that? But helps me record this. So, um, oh, let's for good measure, cause we're playing a kind of simple little guitar rig in. Let's go over here, give ourselves some reverb. So go over here. We'll monitor with that, and we'll kill that. Now you can hear. Okay, great. Let's take a pass. We're just recording. We're just recording MIDI. We're not recording any audio right now. We're just using this to set the loop in place so that when it plays back on the next pass, it'll be locked into clock. So let's take a pass. We have our loop, should be the correct length. So let's record enable the blooper channel and uh, let's play it back and just kind of mess with the modifiers while it rolls and watch how, no matter how we just choose to mangle it, it'll always land on that one again.
go. Uh, no matter how much you mangle that loop, it will always still land on the one because that's what MIDI does. Because that's what MIDI does. Mark, my dude. Mark's one of those guys, I don't, I don't recall ever meeting Mark, but we were just like suddenly friends and it's one of those things. Uh, Mark's one of my favorite dudes to talk to at NAMM and hang out with, and we've had some great conversations. And uh, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that video. Next up, we have Joshua Fenner, who is a music teacher at Swallow Hill Music in Denver, Colorado. And Joshua is using Pro Tools with Blooper, but he's using a Q Connect instead of a Roland UM1 and making some crazy stuff. Now, my favorite part of this video is at the very end, Joshua like looks at the camera and makes this face. And the day that he sent me the video, you know, I like, I wanted to go check it out real quick and I'm like watching it and I'm like, mm hmm, mm hmm. And then when he made that face, I just like actually laughed out loud. Not at him, uh, just I know what that face is. That face of like, oh yeah, listen to the blooper go. We've all been there, you know? Um, cool stuff. So make sure you watch to the very end. Hey guys, this is uh, Joshua. I'm from Denver, Colorado. I'm a local musician of the area as well as a music teacher at Swall Hill Music. Now, I actually have been messing around in Pro Tools and with this board as well on trying to sync it up in terms of clock. So the way that I actually got this to work with the Q Connect and the blooper is that there is a USB out on the Q Connect. You have to set this thing on its setup menu to MIDI Connect and not as a host for another pedal. And then for the blooper side, I have a TRS cable going into the Q Connect on channel six or channel F on the disaster area. And then when I go over to Pro Tools, the simplest setup is I actually have to go down to two different menus. So I go down to MIDI input devices and then I need to check mark that disaster G3 MIDI is emulated. And then I go into MIDI beat clock as well. This is obviously the super important part. And I have that check mark as well. When I go to hit play and record enable, this should work. So now the blooper is going to link up at a quarter note. Okay, there it is. Okay. And then you can actually see that this is working through when we hit to 120 that this is actually going to change for these other pedals as well which is useful for all of us to know as well so this is actually possible to do in pro tools and it's actually a fairly simple setup all right we all love click tracks right so i have the blooper set up to go with recording on couple different setups so I have it on modifier 1 as well as modifier 4 on kind of a cool additive the additive mode on blooper so now when I actually engage this starts recording and then I can actually re-engage it and do this setup with it What I say about that face. Yep, we can all relate to that. Uh, thank you, Joshua, for making that video. We greatly appreciate it. And with that, this wraps up this episode. 
Thank you for watching and remember you can email me anytime with questions and I'll do my best to help because man the MIDI uh, MIDI and Pro Tools is hard again with my favorite part sharpie time so first let's look at mark's setup mark was using something called the roland um1 looks like this so on the computer side usb cable and on the midi box side five pin so all it's doing is converting midi from usb to five pin so what that looks like is we have our computer the Roland UM1 to the MIDI box. This is not drawn to scale. From the MIDI box, a TRS cable going out to blooper. And that's it. So Roland UM1, let me write this out. MIDI box, TRS cable. This drawing needs some color. This is what Mark Johnston has going on. The MIDI is generated in his computer DAW, which is carried from a USB, and the Roland UM1 converts it to five pin, which is picked up by the MIDI box. And then the MIDI box, um, you set the jumper for ring, and then you use a TRS cable to go to your blooper. Now let's have a look at Joshua's setup. Joshua is using a Q-Connect, and if you look at the back of the Q Connect, there's a little USB. I'm not going to pretend like I know the number of that. Actually, yes, I do. It's a USB Mini B. So it's the one that looks like that. Kind of looks like the, um, I think it looks like the fret marker on a Gibson Les Paul. So this end would go into the computer, USB. MIDI would be converted here just like a MIDI box, and then it would come out of the TRS ports to your Chase Bliss pedal. Computer DAW, USB to the Q-Connect, TRS to blooper. A USB to Mini B. This is a TRS cable. This is a Q-Connect. MIDI starting at the DAW, going into the USB going down into the Q-Connect. Then the Q-Connect has TRS ports that are going out. Just make sure you configure those for sending on the ring. Then you can use a TRS cable to go out to blooper. And that's it.